Well, depending on how you vote today, apparently democracy is at stake. So make sure you go out and vote and then let's buy some dividend stocks because at the end of the day, the majority of what happens in American government is outside of our control, like inflation. Inflation sucks and it is destroying the average Joe right now. In today's video, I have another dividend stock for sale on a deep discount right now with a proven ability to beat inflation. Also, stick around to the end of the video for another Average Joe live Q&A with another great question I'm gonna answer. Right now, we're in the process of covering different types of investments that are great at beating inflation because we realize just how much it eats into our overall portfolio value. In this video, we're highlighting another great dividend stock that for me checks all the boxes that make it a quality dividend stock and does a great job of outpacing inflation. In this video, we're talking about the Eastman Chemical Company, ticker symbol EMN. Eastman Chemical Company is in the materials sector of the economy, and it's been paying consecutive and increasing dividends every single year now for 13 consecutive years. Remember, what makes a quality dividend stock? A consistent track record of paying consecutive and increasing dividends also a healthy dividend yield, a consistent dividend growth rate that outpaces not only the long-term inflation rate, but even the short-term inflation rate we're experiencing right now. And then also a healthy and safe dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow. So let's take a deeper look at the Eastman Chemical Company. Eastman is another one of those dividend stocks, those companies that you just don't know much about. You don't realize what they do as part of their business until you actually dig a little bit beneath the surface. Eastman is really a collection of different brands, including Lumar, Safelex, SunTech, Vansiva, Nai, Gila, V-Cool, Thermonol, Green Cell, Adapt, and many more. Taking a deeper dive into their annual report, you can see that they have specific product segments. They have their additives and functional product segment, their advanced materials segment, their chemical intermediate segment, and lastly, their fiber segment. And Eastman really has a significant amount of different products that they sell, including things like solvents, polymers, Formula One high performance auto tint for windows, additives, resins, alcohol. And these products are sold in vastly different markets, agricultural to childcare items, graphic arts, medical, transportation, janitorial and household cleaners, hygiene, commercial housewares, this is what I call extreme diversification. You'll also notice here looking at their annual report that their amount of sales per operating segment that we spoke about is very stable and balanced. First off, we've got the additives and functional product segment, which made $3.7 billion in 2021 in sales. Then if we scroll down, we went from 3.7 down to 3.0 billion in sales for 2021. Keep going further, we also have the chemical intermediate segment where we still made $2.849 billion. And then here for the fiber segment, it is definitely a little lower at $900 million, but still there is consistent income being earned across all the segments. Let's get back to the specific dividend metrics for Eastman Chemical Company. Remember, 13 years of consecutive dividend payments Let's take a look at those dividend growth rates. Remember, that is what directly impacts our fight against inflation. We've got the one, three, five, and 10 year dividend growth rates here at 8.8%, 7.1, 8.3, and 11.1%. All of these numbers are at or beating the current short-term high inflation rate we're seeing of right around seven to eight percent. Furthermore, this company has a current annual dividend yield of 3.77 percent compared to their average five-year historical dividend yield of only 2.94 percent, which is effectively a 22 percent discount. Remember, when we talk about payout ratio, we're talking about dividend safety. And with our payout ratio, we talk about a payout ratio based on free cash flow as opposed to net income, because dividends, again, are paid with cash not with net income. We can see here the most recent full year, 2021, had a payout ratio based on free cash flow of 38%. And you'll notice that given the tumultuous times we've been living through the past 12 months, the trailing 12 month payout ratio is elevated at 64%. Both of these numbers are below the threshold of 75%. Remember that free cash flow is the cash left over after you've paid all of your required expenses and then made your required investments back into the business. Even after all those expenses are paid, this company has 
more than sufficient cash on hand to make these dividend payments. Here's a look on the Morningstar website of the dividend payment history. You'll notice that the dividend payment is slowly increasing here from 189 in 2016, all the way up to 304 over the trailing 12 months in the current dividend payment. Here's that consistent free cash flow. Back to 2012, all the way to current, we have very consistent, stable, and increasing free cash flow per share that is more than sufficient to pay the dividend. You can see currently for Eastman Chemical that their current price at $80.59 per share is a definitely a low over the past 12 months. If you scoot back out over the five years or the past 10 years, we definitely are picking up some value by buying right now. Remember that one of the other big things I talk about is the ability to sell covered calls. And Eastman Chemical does not quite have as lucrative of an option chain. They only have the option for monthly option chains meaning that each of these options expire on the third Friday of every month. But that being said, you could still invest around $8,000 for Eastman Chemical if you wanted to buy 100 shares, if you had the ability to. Recognize that not every average Joe out there has that ability. Sometimes positions have to be made up over time. But you notice here, let's say you wanted to go out to December 16th, which was a 30-day option expiration. We could go out there and we could sell a $90 strike price when it's only $80 right now and still collect about $60 for that option. This cash flow is above and beyond what you're receiving as dividend payments. Eastman's current dividend is $3.04 per share. We'll say times 100 shares equals $300 per year in annual cash flow, but that is without being able to sell covered calls. If we add in a very modest, a $90 strike price with 38 days till expiration, which is a 10.56 delta. That would net us $60. Even if we took that $60 multiplied by 12, this nets you $720 in additional cash flow per year. You're doubling up how much you would ordinarily receive in dividend income. And if we added this all together, 720 plus 304 equals 1,000 $24 per year in cash flow. This is over three times the amount of cash flow you would receive if you just owned the dividend stock and collected the dividend. All right, it's time for the Average Joe live Q&A number seven. And this segment is sponsored by Moomoo. With Moomoo, you get the latest tools and support to make you a more informed trader. With Moomoo, you have the ability to trade not only in pre-market hours, but also after hours. You can use their comprehensive stock screener with over 100 different indicators to filter by. And you have the ability to review top buys and the holding list for more than 10,000 asset management companies, including Berkshire Hathaway, or Soros Capital. Now you like free stuff, right? Like free stocks? Right now, Moomoo is literally, literally giving away free stocks. Open an account and get one free stock. Deposit $100 and you get four more free stocks. Deposit $2,000 and you get a total of, wait for it, 15 free stocks. Additionally, Moomoo is giving an additional $10 in extra cash as long as you deposit any amount of money. If you want to give Moomoo a try, make sure to check out the link down in the description below. All right, guys, so we've got a question here for this Average Joe Life Q&A from Mark. Let's take a listen. My name is Mark, and I just want to take the time to ask for your opinion on what you think is, is the best route for me right now in terms of dividend investing. I'm 29 years old, and I want to try to retire early through dividends. Since I already have a pension plan and a 403B for my full-time job, and I also have a Roth IRA, I also made a dividend portfolio that I started about less than a year ago, and I was thinking of converting it into a pure cash flow portfolio, uh, which in already includes QILD, JEPI, NUC. Do you think that this is the right way to go, given that I already have two retirement accounts plus the Roth IRA. Thanks for everything that you do and for sharing your knowledge through YouTube. Sounds like you are in a great situation. You've got your pension lined up, which is gonna be a great foundation for retirement income. You also have that supplemental income through the Roth IRA and the 403B. So from a retirement standpoint, as long as you're funding all of those sources, then I think you're in great shape. And I think it's awesome that you are looking to retire early by utilizing dividend income. Now, I think that there is no specific one right way to build a dividend portfolio, but I do think there are certain things you should take into account given the fact that you are 29 years old. Number one is taxes. If you're creating a dividend portfolio at this age, you need to be mindful of the fact that it'll need to be in a brokerage account if you're trying to retire early because you're looking to access the funds before age 59 and a half, which is your standard retirement age. And from that perspective, some of the investments you mentioned, JEPI, 
QYLD, NUSI, etc. These are all investments that are 100% ordinary income taxable. And that in and of themselves does not make them bad investments. It's just something I think you should definitely consider because you have the ability to invest in qualified dividend paying stocks where you can get that lower preferential tax bracket of potentially 0% or 15 to 20% long-term capital gains tax treatment. And this would come with normal dividend stocks or normal dividend ETFs such as SCHD from the ETF side and most dividend stocks. There are certain dividend investments that I think are best suited for cash flow right now. And there are some of the ones that you mentioned, including QYLD and JEPI and NUSI, although I'm not really a big fan of NUSI personally based on the structure of the investment. For me personally at age 29, my thought would be I'd like to utilize investments that have a little bit more balance between dividend income, yes, but also dividend growth and some level of capital appreciation. So for me personally, given how much time you have to invest, I would personally be angling more towards SCHD if you wanted to use an ETF because it's got such great balance between dividend income, dividend growth, and capital appreciation. But I would also lean towards normal quality dividend stocks if I wanted to branch away from SCHD. That's just my own two cents though. At the end of the day, you can be successful with investments such as QYLD and JEPI. I personally think though, they're not quite suited for your specific situation given the fact that you're 29 and you have so much time to invest. But it sounds like you're in excellent shape and whichever decision you choose, I hope you are highly successful. Thanks again for the question mark and for those of you out there that would love to ask a question of me and get it answered here on the show, make sure to leave a voicemail for me in the SpeakPipe app, which is down in the description below. Click on that link, leave me a voicemail and I can almost guarantee you, your voicemail will get answered and I will answer your question fully. So with Eastman Chemical, we have a consistent dividend payment happening year over year over the past 13 years. We have those dividend growth rates that beat the long-term and the short-term inflation historical average here in the United States, currently on sale at 3.77%. And then finally, we have that dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow being very low compared to what our maximum threshold is. All of these elements point to this company being a potentially excellent fit in your portfolio if you're focusing on trying to build cash flow at a level every year greater than the changes in inflation. Hopefully you found some value to this video. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this company, what information you would have liked to have seen that I didn't cover, or what did I cover that was really helpful to you. Make sure to leave your two cents down below. And that's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks for watching.